those in the office, the teachers, and the students must all have one common goal, and even the parents, to be able to say, we have unity. Everybody must say, why are these children here at the school? The children need to be taught why they are at the school. You are here to learn. You are here to get an education for the purpose of being able to become a responsible man or woman. To be able to know how to read, write, how to do arithmetic, so that when it's time to get a job, you will know. We need unity in our schools. If I would say we need unity in the home, that's saying the men need to have a common goal, a common denominator. What are we trying to do in this family? And then if I said we need to have unity in the church, that means all the people need to have a one common goal. That everybody is not going one person's way. It's kind of similar like the ant. The Bible says that the ant has no overseer or guide. But yet, ants work as a unit. And they work together and that's why they can get so much done. I did what the word said. I have studied the end. And I have done different tests. And they truly are not insects. The Bible said the ants are people. Now, I choose to believe what the word said. I didn't understand that until I studied them and found out they are highly intelligent. Because an ant is so small, if it comes out while it's cold, they will freeze. They know that. I tried to fool them. I put a bucket over an ant bed. I put a cloth over it to try to mimic that the weather has changed. Then I took a hot dog and I stuck it on a stick and stuck it right down in the top of that ant bed. And I checked it over a few days. And I said, they gonna come out to get that hot dog. But every time I looked, it, looked under there, they hadn't bothered. But then all of a sudden, they, the hot dog, was getting closer and closer to the ant bed. So I guess they sent a few up there to eat around the inside and make the thing slide down. Came back a few days later, the hot dog was gone. And I got to thinking. I looked and I asked, wait a minute. Where the stick? I didn't see the stick sticking up out that bed no more. The ants did not slide <laughs> the hot dog down the stick. The ant bed, the ants built the thing around the stick and the hot dog. They did not come out. <laughs> and that's smart. Okay. We understand. Try means three. Unity means the quality of being united into one. So if you put the word try with unity, what do it mean? Read it. The quality of since try means three, and unity means the quality of being united into one, 
Tri-unity would mean the quality of three being united into one. Now, God tells us to look into nature to understand this. We can look at things today. For example, tri circle. Why is it called tri? Because tri means three. What is three about this, this thing here? Wheels. The wheels. But it's not just it's got three wheels anywhere. The three wheels are working as one mm -hmm. to promote balance and motion. You couldn't put those wheels anywhere else. What about this? What is that? Try. Try means three. For the children, how many sides do a triangle have? Three. Three sides. How many triangles do you see? Huh? One. So three sides make one triangle. Do you kind of get what God is saying? That is what God is telling us to do. All right, children. Do y'all know what that creature is? A who? A triceratops. That is correct. Now you understand why they call it that. This is a Greek word. Tri means what? In Greek, sarak mean horn. Ops mean face. Three horned face or triceratops. Okay. In order to better, I got to say quote, better understand where God came from, you must first understand his intrinsic nature. In other words, the most important part that makes him who or what he is. God expresses himself just as we do. Don't we express ourselves? The type of car we drive is an expression of us. Uh, the clothes we wear, the home we buy, the way we decorate our home is an expression of ourselves. Well, I'm telling you that God expresses himself just like you do. So when he creates something, he creates things after his own intrinsic nature. In other words, the way he eats. And he did that primarily so that we can get a little glimpse into who he is, what he is, and how he operates. One example that can slightly, I have to use these words carefully, help us to understand his eternal power and divinity, and the King James said his Godhead, is to understand three things. Time, space, and matter. I know you don't understand it. How can time, space, and matter have anything to do with God? You see, the God of the Bible is not affected by time, space, or matter. If God was affected by time, space, or matter, he wouldn't be God. You are affected by time. You live in space. I can see your body as you can see me. But God is outside of that. That's what makes him so, so awesome. You see, time, and, and please allow me to use these as examples of what we talk about. I'm using a clock representing time. I'm using 
the galaxy representing space, because it's out there in space, and I'm using the Earth to represent matter, okay? Mm -hmm. Of course, the universe with the stars and stuff have space, have matter, but we're going to use the Earth as a idiom of uh, matter. Think about this. Time, space, and matter is what we call a continuum. It's called what, everybody? Continuum. continuum. Here's what a continuum is. A continuous sequence in which the adjacent elements, in this case time, space, and matter, are not perceptibly different from each other, although in extremes are quite distinct. Now there is nothing more distinct than looking at time, space, and matter. They look, but they actually work together. And I'm going to tell you why. Here's a truth that you got to understand. Time, space, and matter have to come into existence at the same time. At the same time. Because think about it. If you had matter, but you didn't have no space, where would you put it? And if you had matter, space, but no time, then when would you put it? You cannot have time, space, and matter independent. They have to come into existence simultaneously. And here's the beauty of it. And it just blew me out the water when I saw this. God actually told us this in the very first book of the Bible and the very first verse. Look, Genesis 1 and 1 says this. In the beginning, so there's your time. God created the heavens. The heavens, space. There's your space. And the earth. There's your body. Wow. When I saw that, that blew me out of the wall. I said, Lord, you explained it to us in the very first verse of the Bible. The very first. I said, isn't he wonderful? Amen. So you can, so you have time, space, and matter. Time, space, and matter actually created a triunity, which is three working as one, which is the same thing with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now, we said triunity is three being united into one. Believe it or not, the universe is composed. Now, we read the scripture in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. And God told us to get a slight understanding of who I am and my eternal power in God is. Look at what I made. Because I made some things just the way I made. The way I am. Not the way he's made. God is not made. He's always wool. Michael 1, verse 2. So, the universe is composed of these three structures. What we just discussed. Time, space, and matter. Just as God, being a triunity of two invisible persons, the Father and the Spirit, and one visible person, Jesus Christ, the same thing holds true right here. So, out of these three, which two is invisible? Pick out one. Time, and what else? Space. Them two are invisible. And of course, matter is visible. Did you see how God has created things even as after his own nature, his own divinity and Godhead? Time. 
is also a triunity. And what did we say triunity mean? <clears throat> Three being united into one. Three being united into one or working together as one. Time is also triunity of past, present, and future. Two are invisible, just as the Father and the Spirit. What two of these are invisible? Past and future. and future. You can't see the past, can't see the future. Remember, all you have is right now. So what's all that's important is what you do right now. Because that's all you have. Amen? And these three work synergistically together. For example, if it were possible for someone to time travel, and if they go back into my past when I was a child, I'm standing here now, and they go back in the past, and they kill me as I was a baby. Everything I have done up to this point would be non-existent. You wouldn't even know me. So messing with my past affects my present and also affects my future. Do you see what we're saying? Space also. Y'all don't know that, that. This excited me when I said, Lord, you truly did make just did things that was similar like you are, to help us to understand it. I don't want to put the intellect to understand you a little bit better. Space is also triune. Space requires height, width, and length to constitute space. Each one of these dimensions are separate and, in, and distinct in and of itself. Yet these three form space. If you were to remove just one of them, let's choose one. Let's remove height and see what happened to the rest. That's what happens. If I had a ball, a beach ball, the beach ball would be about this big, and it has dimensions. It's got height, length, and width, even though it's right. If I were to just say I'm going to get rid of the height of the ball, mm -hmm. when I get rid of the height, I undo the length and the width automatically. Mm -hmm. Just as time, space, and matter came into existence simultaneously, it's the same thing with God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are one. Man is also, and I know people don't understand it, but it is true. Man also is a triunity. Having three primary components. Man is physical, man is mental, and man is spiritual. Just like God, two are invisible, and one is visible. Tell me one of them that is invisible. Mental and spiritual. And of course, physical, you can see. Remember in the book of Genesis, verse, I think it's around Genesis 1:26, it says this: God said, Let us, US, let us make man in our image after our <coughs> likeness. So man is mental. Let me give you an example of mental. I want to do a little test here. I want everybody to do this for me. Right quick. <clears throat> I want everybody to close your eyes. And I want you to start counting down from 20 backwards. 20, 19, 18, 17. But I want you to do it inside your mind. 
And then I'm going to tell you to do something. And whatever you hear me tell you to do or say, I want you to do that, okay? I'm going to say, begin. And when I say the word begin, I want you to begin counting backwards from 20. Everybody ready? Close your eyes. Begin now. In your mind, count back. Now everybody say your name out loud. Thank you. Did you not notice that when you were speaking in your mind, when you said your name out loud, you stopped counting? You stopped counting. Right now, I'm thinking about an object. I see it in my mind. Do you see it? You can't see what I see, can you? But I see it. I see every part of it. Right here in this church, I'm looking at it right now. Do you not know that part of you that's able, when you start counting backwards from 20, did you not hear yourself? That was actually you. How can you speak without moving your lips or use your voice? Because you're spiritual. That is the real you on the inside of this fleshly body. That is the real you. When you think and see something in your mind, that is your mental capability. When you're able to speak without moving your lips, that is the spirit. That is you. Man truly is like God. Amen. Now, Sales. This is a sale. I know y'all remember this in school. Compose the fundamental structure of all living organisms. All organic life are composed of cells. And a cell have three primary parts. Do y'all study this in school yet? Children? Tell me the three parts of a cell. What that part right up there? What is that right there? Cell That is called the outer wall. Oh. What is this part right here? Huh? No. Cytoplasm. And what is that in the center there? What they call that? Huh? Nucleus. Nucleus. That is correct. That is the nucleus. So you got the outer wall, the cytoplasm, and the nucleus. Kind of similar like an egg. The egg got the shell, the egg white, and the egg yolk. But if I had an egg right here, how many eggs would I have? One. One egg. And here's the thing. The removal of any one if you remove anyone, if you remove the nucleus, the cell dies. If you remove the outer wall, the cell dies. If you remove the cytoplasm and leave the outer wall and the nucleus, the cell dies. So the three work together as one. One cannot function without the other. So, in each of these examples, the three structures of the universe with time, space, and matter. The three dimensions of space with height, width, and length. The three dimensions of time with past, present, and future. The three primary components of man, physical, mental, and spiritual. And finally, the three primary parts of the cell, the outer wall, the cytoplasm, and the nucleus. Here's the thing. If any one component of any one of those things is removed, it is undone. It is undone. It is a, it'll be a, 
like a demise to the whole. Yeah. You get rid of man's mental, the man can't be a man anymore. You get rid of any part of this, it is not a cell any longer. In like manner, the Godhead contains three distinct persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> According to these scriptures, the Bible says and teaches that each one is God. Let's read it. This first scripture is Ephesians 4 and 6. Read that scripture. It says what? Of all. Of all. Who is above all and through all and in you all. So we see that the Father, he is God. Now let's look at Colossians 2 and 9. For in him, Jesus, dwelleth what? All the fullness of the God and his Father. It said all. Not a portion of it. It said in Jesus dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. What is the Godhead? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But he held holds it in a fleshly or earthly body. Now right here, this is a picture of Jesus being baptized. And this is the time where we see all three come together. At Jesus' baptism, God the Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. The Holy Spirit came and landed on him in the bodily shape of a dove, and Jesus was standing there. Father, Son, Spirit. Now let's look at Acts 5, verse 3 and 4. Look at, listen, it's talking about Ananias and Sapphira. But Peter said, Ananias, now y'all know the story, right? Y'all know the story that the saints was giving money. The church just got started, and all the saints was giving mother money. And Barnabas, called the son of consolation, he sold all his sold property and laid the money at the apostles' feet so they could have money to distribute to those that were in need. And here it is. They heard about it. The people got excited. So Ananias and Sapphira decided to do the same thing. They had some property. They went and sold it. I don't know what came over them, but with what they had, they decided to keep some of it. They gave a big point. They walked in there like this is all. I sold my property. Here you go. And they set it down before the apostle. This is what Peter said when they came in. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? See that in red? Ananias, the Bible said, lied to the Holy Ghost. And to keep back part of the price of the land, while it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? For thou hast not lied to men, but to who? Up here it says he lied to the Holy Ghost. Down here he said he lied to God. Because they are the same. Amen. Amen. Remember, the removal of one person destroys the unity of the whole. That's why you have all these fake, false religions coming up and saying that we Christians believe in three gods. No, we do not. We believe that there is one God. There is one God and only one God. And I heard one man said, bring me any Muslim, show me in the Bible where it said that God was three gods. He's not. He's one God. And I tell any Muslim, 
If you can show me in the Bible where the Bible said that there are three gods, I become a Muslim. Oh, see, I already know it's not in there. You just don't understand how God is God. And that's what we're trying to explain here. Everything works in threes. Even the gospel story illustrates this interdependency of threes. The sanctuary had three places. It had right there at the bottom of the courtyard, right here the holy place, and here the most holy place. Three. Here's the setup of the sanctuary that God told Moses to set up. Isn't it odd that it's almost in the shape of a cross? God does everything for a purpose. There are three stages of salvation. Justification, sanctification, glorification. Justification means that God has credited what Jesus Christ has done on your behalf, and it's just as though you haven't even seen it. It's not based on how you feel about it. It's based on what his finished work said and have done. So he justified you. Then he turns that justification into sanctification. If you just would believe by faith that you are justified, we waiting for an aura to engulf us before we believe this. That is not what God's word teaches. What Christ did on the cross justified you. In other words, God was satisfied with what Christ did. He accepted Christ's blood for the redemption of man. And since God accepted it, God looks at you through Christ. That's why you allow Christ to come into your heart and he can live the life. Amen. And when he comes into your heart, he Amen. starts sanctifying you. And one day, you will break the law of gravity. Hallelujah. One day, I am going to leave this sin-sick world. I will break the law of gravity and be raptured up for a thousand years to be in the presence of God. Amen. Oh, blessed be. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing on this planet more important to me than that. I'm making it to heaven. Because if after I have done all the things to help people and to do for people and then turn around and lose my own soul, what has it profited me? Nothing. So getting to heaven is the most important thing you can do. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, the